Welcome back to the Webflow series episode 2. Today we learn about Webflow Designer, HTML, CSS basic concept, the box model and element hierarchy. Let's do it. So this is your initial screens once you create an account in Webflow. But if you have not created an account yet, just go and create an account by using the link given in the description. So this is your dashboard where you can find all of your projects. Here you have other pages like Made in Webflow. Here you can see designs from different designers. Here you can see Webflow designers profile. And here you can find Webflow University courses. Let's go back to the dashboard. When you click on this new site, Webflow will give you some options to start with. There are a bunch of free and paid templates which you can use for your project, but we will start from the blank project, give a name to your new site. So it is called the designer. This is where the magic happens. We will build our landing page on this white page. And on the top left, this Webflow icons can take us to the dashboard, project setting and editor. Below is the element panel or add panel from which we can add all the given elements like boxes, buttons, text, placeholder for images and videos, forms, sliders and so on. Then we have the symbol panel. The purpose of the symbol is when we want to use an element anywhere in the project or for example in all pages of the project. If you want to make some changes in the element let's say for example in the navigation bar it will apply in all the pages in the project and will save your time then we have the navigator panel which is a sort of like a figma or xdlr panel but not exactly the same and this is the pages panel where we can see all the pages in the website and manage the setting in different pages the CMS or content management system is how we control and work with dynamic content. Now what is dynamic content and static content? For example, we have this team member list and we need to add a button for read more. Okay, let's add this button in the card and then in the second card. This is static content because we updated this by hand. But what if we have 400 members in this list, then we can add these change in all the cards? No. With dynamic content, we do it all at once, so everything gets built out automatically. We will talk about this topic in detail in the near future. And this is for e-commerce stores, we are not covering this topic yet. Then we have the assets panel, where we can import all the assets like images, icons, videos, and loading files for building our website. On the right side, we have this style panel, where we can add styles to each element on the page. This is almost similar to a Figma or XD style panel. Here we can resize an element. Here we have the text panel. We can change the color or gradient of the element here. And in this panel, we can apply a stroke and roundness to an element and have different panel for drop shadow, opacity, transitions, and so on. In the center, we have breakpoints where we are not just designing for a single desktop, but for all kinds of devices. This is for where we can make our website responsive. We are also able to resize our screen for each device. On the bottom right, when we resize this page, you can see a wide range of different resolutions for different devices. Even you can add more breakpoints from here, like a larger breakpoint, which is 1920 pixel and also smaller breakpoints from the base breakpoint. As I mentioned before, in Webflow we don't write code, but Webflow write code in the background. And that code is accessible right here, which include HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and all the assets organized. And to publish your site, you can do that from here. You can publish on Webflow's domain, as well as you can publish on custom domain. We will see these things later. That's the brief intro for Webflow designers. So before starting to build our landing page inside Webflow, let me explain some important concepts. So as we know, in Webflow, we only do user interface. You don't need to know the code, but if you understand the basics, it will be helpful. At least you should know the basic concept of HTML and CSS. HTML or Hypertext Markup Language, a standardized system for tagging text files to achieve fonts, colors, graphic and hyperlink effect on worldwide web pages. For example, we have this content inside a web page. The heading, 
paragraph and this image so actually this page is created by using this html basically the way html works is that each content is wrapped around some kind of a tag so this heading is being wrapped by this h1 tag so this is the opening tag and this is the closing tag and the p tag is for paragraph and this img tag is for that image and all of this content is wrapped in this body tag which means this entire page HTML largely determines textual content. Everything is tagged one after another like a normal text document. So that's why we have CSS. CSS or cascading style sheet is a design language that makes a website looks more appealing than just plain or uninspiring pieces of text. Actually, the HTML is the skeleton and the CSS is the flesh around the skeleton. The box model. This concept is super important before you dive into Webflow. Everything on the web is actually boxes within boxes within boxes. Every web page is structured in a so-called box model. Every element in HTML in the reality is a box. And all of these small boxes sit inside other big boxes. All the way down to the final big box where everything else sits. And that's our web page. Let me show you this on the Apple side. I'm going to click on inspect. This can show us the code for this website. You can see on the top, this is HTML for this site. And as, as you can see, as I move through this, you can see the boxes are nested within boxes. The button here is a box and this is the name of the box. And by giving it a name or style is actually the CSS. You can see down here. Basically, the name defines how an element should look like. What's the font size, what's the background of this, the padding, the margin, and so on. Let me show you how it works in Webflow. So we have a box for the heading, a box for the paragraph, and for the image. And these three boxes are nested in that big box. And that box is nested in another big box. And all of these boxes are nested in a bigger box, which is the body, or our page. Now, we have to understand another quick concept, and that is element hierarchy. That's how an object nests inside of one another and becomes parents, children, and siblings. Let's delete this one and add an empty box from the add panel. And I want to add heading and paragraphs in this box. You can directly drag an element to the canvas or you can drag it in the navigator panel too. So this heading and paragraph are nested inside that box or deep log and this is the parent box and these elements are the siblings and the children of that box. So many of the properties passed down from the parents to children, this is called inheritance. For example, if I change the font or the font color from the parent, you can see all the children's colors are automatically updated. If I add another paragraph text to that box, it will also get that property. But we can directly change the style of the child element. But if you see this orange text, this means that color style is inherited from that parent box. But we can change the color. For moving elements, you can do that in the canvas by just dragging upward and downward. But the better experience is to do that in the navigator panel just like that. Okay, this structure might feel a little confusing in the beginning, but don't worry, we will make this easy. So this was the end of the lesson. Thanks for watching. Stick around.